If you're confused about the tech job market right now, you're not alone. While Meta is throwing $200 million packages at individual AI researchers, over 386,000 tech workers have lost their jobs. Microsoft plans to lay off more than 9,000 employees. The tech sector shed more than 386,000 jobs. Amazon will reduce its total corporate workforce. So I wanted to figure out, how is this even possible? Why are some AI researchers becoming millionaires while other experienced programmers can't find jobs? And if you're watching this video thinking, what does this mean for me? This video is for you. Let's start with a number, $200 million. That's what Meta reportedly offered Roaming Peng, who used to lead Apple's foundation model team. Bloomberg says that's more money than Apple pays anyone except for Tim Cook himself. This whole thing started when OpenAI's Sam Altman went on a podcast in June and casually dropped that Meta was offering $100 million signing bonuses to poach his people. Then Meta's CTO Boz clarified, no, that's total compensation, not just signing bonus. So basically confirming the story. And by the way, when they say total compensation, it is a combination of signing bonus, base salary, and meta stock that typically vests over four years. So if you end up leaving early, you will be giving up millions of dollars. So clearly Zuckerberg isn't messing around here. Meta hit the news again when it tried to get Alexander Wang from Scale AI. I guess Meta couldn't just hire him since He's the founder after all. So they invested $14.3 billion in his entire company, only to poach Wang and appoint him as Meta's chief AI officer. Since June, Meta has poached at least 16 top researchers. OpenAI lost at least 10 people, including Sheng Jia Zhao, who co-created ChatGPT. He was then appointed as the chief scientist of AI Superintelligence Lab, reporting directly to Wang. Google also lost people like Jack Ray, who was the tech lead behind Gemini. Now the argument for these paychecks could be that these are the maybe one or 200 people on earth who understands how to build artificial super intelligence. And right now, every single tech company probably wants these guys so they can survive the AI competition. Think about it like this. Imagine if there were only 200 people who knew how to build cars, then every single car company would want them to stay competitive. So that's basically what's happening in AI right now. But while Meta is throwing $200 million offers, here's what's happening on the other side of the tech industry. Over 386,000 tech workers have been laid off. And it's not just junior people, I'm talking about senior engineers with decades of experience, product managers who shipped features you're probably using every day and even designers who created apps you love. I found this post on Reddit that really captures what's happening to real people caught in this divide. 55-year-old experienced IT engineer laid off last Friday. I am an almost 55-year-old experienced IT professional with over 14 years in the field. Out of the blue, on Friday, I met with my manager and HR and was told I was being let go because they were going in a different direction. WTF that means. I even had several large performance bonuses and I'm just in shock. This is the other side of the story. While a select few AI researchers become millionaires, experienced professionals like this are getting blindsided. And it doesn't matter if you have good performance reviews, bonuses, because you can suddenly be going in different directions. To understand why there's such a big divide, I dug into the research papers to figure out what's really going on here. After hours of research, I ended up writing a full 38-page report called AI and the Future of Work. You can grab it on my website if you want to dig deeper, but here's the part that you need to know for this video. AI is clearly not replacing all jobs. It's actually replacing specific tasks within jobs. And that's exactly what's creating this massive divide in who's valuable and who's not. We can call this the task disruption framework to understand job security. Every job can be mapped on two dimensions. How exposed is it to AI automation and how much strategic value does it create? This gives us four types of work. First, the low value, high exposure work, like data entry or basic coding tasks. AI is just straight up replacing these. Second is the low value, low exposure. Think maintenance or field work. These jobs are safe for now because they require physical presence 
and context that AI can't handle yet, unless we start making cheap robots in the future. Third is the high value, high exposure ones. These are jobs like software engineering, data analysis, and even some marketing roles can fall into this category. AI can do parts of these jobs really well, but humans are still needed for strategy and judgment. And fourth is high value, low exposure. So leadership, creativity, strategy, complex problem solving. The demand for these are actually growing and commanding big bugs because companies need human who can figure out how to build these AI tools to transform their businesses. The interesting part is that this has happened before. During the industrial revolution, a few factory owners became incredibly wealthy while skilled craftsmen lost their livelihoods. The difference is the speed. The industrial revolution played out over decades. Steam engines took 50 years to transform manufacturing. Railways spread across continents over generations. Workers had time to retrain, move to other cities, and adapt to new life. But this AI transformation is taking over years and sometimes even months. Many AI researchers think that we'll hit AGI, artificial general intelligence, that can do any intellectual tasks human can. Some think it could even happen as soon as 2027. Now this could be hype. Tech leaders do love bold predictions. But I found this timeline from ex-OpenAI researchers that shows what they think could happen by 2027. In this prediction, they made up a fictional company named OpenBrain. By late 2025, they launch AI agents that start doing real work, writing code, solving problems, leading to companies hiring way fewer developers. And we can already see it kind of happening. By 2026, entire development teams get replaced by AI agents that work 24-7 without breaks or salaries. Then by March 2027, another fictional company named DeepSend from China steals the most advanced models, turning this into a geopolitical arm race. Now OpenAI can spin up to 200,000 AI agents working together. And this is like having 50,000 elite engineers working at 30x human speed and boom, they unlock AGI. And now this is of course only a prediction, but this is a scenario that many experts believe to be a possible. Suddenly those 200 million offers make sense. These companies aren't just competing for talent. They're actually racing to build a thing that might end up replacing most talent. Many experts think what we're seeing now is just the beginning. Much bigger changes are coming. But here's what gives me hope. Humans have always figured out how to work alongside new technology. We just need to be intentional about it. So if you're watching this thinking, what do I actually do now? I have some good news for you. After all the research, I am seeing some clear patterns. First, you wanna become AI fluent. You don't need to build AI models from scratch, but you do need to know how to use AI tools effectively. I'm talking about learning to prompt well, understanding what these tools can and can't do, and figuring out how to verify their outputs. Second, focus on what we can call human AI collaboration skills. Analytical thinking, system thinking, creative problem solving. These are the skills that become more valuable when AI handles the routine stuff. Third, if you can, learn some basic programming. Think about calculators. They help you do math faster, but you still need to understand foundational math in order to use calculators more effectively. I believe the same thing will happen with AI, even when I'm just vibe coding. Having that foundational knowledge of how code works makes me so much better at prompting. I know what's possible, what to ask for, and how to spot when something is wrong. It doesn't mean that you need to become a developer, but having a foundation in programming will help you work with AI tools way more effectively. In the future, everyone from lawyers to handyman could be using AI tools tools and understanding how they work can give you an edge. But honestly, learning AI skills alone won't matter if you can't rebrand yourself to be hireable for companies. So for example, if you're job searching and not landing interviews, you probably need to work on your resume to showcase your AI skills and experience in language that's attractive for the employers. Now, if you're getting interviews but not getting offers, you probably need to work on your interview skills. I have tons of resources for both resume writing and interview prep on my website, and I'll leave the link in the description. Now, if you're feeling overwhelmed by all of this, I get it. But remember, 
every major technological shift creates more opportunities than it destroys. Think of printing press back in the days. They put scribes out of work, but created entire publishing industries. Cars also killed horses and buggy businesses, but created millions of jobs in car manufacturing, sales, and repair. So these $200 million AI researchers, sure, they're important, but they're not the whole story. The real opportunity is for the millions of people who can figure out how to use AI tools to do their jobs better, solve bigger problems, and create more value. Now, if you want to learn more about the trends that are shaping the future of jobs and what high-paying jobs will survive AI, you want to watch this video. And if you found this video helpful, hit that like button so more people can see this video. I'll see you in the next one.